All right. So like they said, this is ready, set. So um, we're going to talk about a turtle stitch. Um, oh, wrong thing. So uh, we do have a folder that has all the resources included in this presentation. It's that bit.ly link. Um, so it's just bit.ly slash turtle stitch folder. So anything we say is in the folder will be um, at that link. Um, I'm Emily Hurst. I'm an innovation coach for Hamilton County Schools in Chattanooga. Um, I do have a digital fabrication focus. We have 36 digital fabrication labs. Um, and I have an ELA background, so that's kind of where I came from. Here's my email and my Twitter handle if you uh, have questions or you do some fun projects. And I am Andrew Hardy, Emily's partner in crime and another innovation coach for Hamilton County Schools. Uh, my main focus is project and problem-based learning uh, and innovative teacher, co teacher and school cohorts that are trying out new practices. I've got a social studies background, so 10 years ago, this is not where I would have expected to be, like many of you, uh, but it's, it's great to be presenting here today. Uh, my email and Twitter is below. We'll, we'll have those again at the end of our presentation. So um, m many of you have probably never heard of Turtle Stitch, and that's okay. Um, it is a platform that is going to help generate patterns for embroidery machines. And whether or not you have an embroidery machine with you today, it's okay, because we're going to be focused on, on the code aspect, which is based on Snap, which is a browser-based uh, coding language, so block-based coding. Um, and Turtle Stitch is an awesome tool that essentially is going to help students create their own free and personalized embroidery, embroidery designs. Uh, that they'll be able to upload um, with a USB drive or an SD card to um, an embroidery machine. And again, it's custom and free. So we love Turtle Stitch. Thank you, Emily. Um, and you know, as for coding, coding is important because it's, it's linked to higher uh, rates of college enrollment for students um, and higher self ratings and communication, create, creativity, critical thinking, all of our four C's. Uh, it's really important to start students early with coding so they build confidence. Um, for all you math and literacy teachers, coding is a great way, uh, and Turtle Stitch is a great way for students to do that at the same time. And, um, you know, I was, I was new to coding about two years ago, uh, and so block coding is a really great entry point for beginning students of, of really any age. And finally, why are we focused on embroidery itself? Um, well, it's very visible thinking. You're going to be wearing uh, the work that you create, uh, hanging up the work you create. Um, it's really cost effective. You know, machines kind of ranged anywhere from $200 up to we've got some some big boys that are about $1,000 here in Chattanooga where we work. Um, and really, just students are going to be able to come up with a really high quality and precise uh, project. So embroidery is a, a great way to uh, take something that can be sort of abstract digitally like coding and bring it to the real world. So we are actually gonna take some time to play on Turtle Stitch today. We think that's the best way to, to really get to know it is to have you guys play on it. So um, to do that, we are gonna go to Turtle Stitch. Um, it's just turtlestitch.org. If you've ever used Turtle Art, it's the same coding platform. Um, it just makes it so that you can export it for the embroidery machine. So. When you go to Turtle Stitch, um, up at the top, you see you can run or you can sign up or log in. Um, I would suggest signing up. You're not going to be able to do that immediately because it's going to send you like a confirmation email and all of that. So you can't save the work you do until you sign up, but you can still go ahead and play just by clicking run. You can't Once save your work. It will let you. You save it as an XML. You XML. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can like download it and then upload it once you do have it. So um, when you actually do want to save, you can just go up to this like document and save as. And yeah, you can go ahead and export that. Um, so just to kind of give you the basics of Turtle Stitch, what we have um, over on this left side is called the palette. It's what holds all the blocks and you have different kinds of blocks. We're gonna to focus today mostly on like the motion and the control, some of the more basic blocks. Uh, this area in the center is your scripting pane. It's just where you put your blocks. Anything you put there is the code that is actually being counted. 
And then over here you have your, uh, I don't know where to put my pictures. Um, you have your stage. That's where your design is going to show up. And that's where you have your little turtle where it gets the name turtle stitch. Um, some important little buttons that you might want to see is reset view. So that's going to bring you back out to this view. Um, so if you like scroll in or scroll out, once you click reset view, it's going to bring you back there. You can also zoom to fit, which is really helpful when you have actually started a design because if it gets really big, um, you might not be able to see it, or if it's really tiny, if you zoom to fit, that helps. Um, I really like turbo mode because it just makes it go fast. Um, and then something else to notice is the size. Uh, a lot of times when we're coding, we're not worried about how big something actually is, but when you're going to export it to an embroidery machine, that matters. So keeping track of the size is pretty important. So we're actually going to go ahead and give you guys a challenge. I'm going to introduce a couple of blocks to you. You can try to keep up. If you can't keep up with what I'm doing, when we go back to our slides, it will be on there. Um, so the first thing I like to always do, because this does translate to an actual embroidery design, is I like to always start. Well, you always have to start with a control. Um, I like to always start with when the green flag is clicked. If I'm not in turbo mode, this little lightning bolt is a green flag. But once I go to turbo mode, it turns it into a green lightning bolt. Um, so that's how I will start my code. And I always start my code the same way. And that is honestly just for safety because I've broken a lot of needles on an embroidery machine by not doing this. So I like to start by going to embroidery and dragging over a clear. So that makes sure that I'm not embroidering random things way off in the corner that I've forgotten about some other time. Um, and then I always go to zero, zero, but I don't want to drag the needle to zero, zero. So I start by saying pin up. And then I, um, see if I can find it, go to X zero, Y zero. And then I put my pin back down and I start every code I do that way. So the first thing it does is it clears everything I've already done. It picks my pin up and it puts it back down at zero, zero. And that way I know I'm right where I want to be. Why don't you use reset? You can use reset. That works. It does just all of that for you. Yes, it does. I like to do this just so that I know I have thought about the safety, especially with kids. When they I start never use the um the when green flag is, I I maybe I should not be here because, but I I I never use that. I just click on the block. I don't know. It, it, yeah, you can do that too. So a lot of times I click over here instead of clicking over here. Um, I like to get it kids. It doesn't, the whole block is silly in if for turtle stitch. It's fine if you're doing um, a snap project, but for turtle stitch, it doesn't seem to make sense. It's a distraction. And anyway, and I don't know why you don't just use a uh, reset. Yeah, I think that that's just uh, because uh, I'm doing it with students a lot of times. I want them to think about where their needle is and where they're putting their needle. And so I want to really spell it out for them. Once they get comfortable with it, they don't have to do that. That's just kind of my personal preference. Okay. Um, and we also have a lot of students who are who are coding on Scratch or on Make Code. Um, and so using a similar programming language and kind of programming style um, can help make those connections for students. I don't, well, I don't agree, but I think I should let you do your presentation and go to another room. Thank you. I just okay. wanted to see what you do. I, I use Turtle Stitch all the time and do lots of workshops and I have a different philosophy. Thank you. Okay, thank cool. you. <laughs> all right, so, um, so what we're gonna do first is we are going to just throw in a move block. And just so you can see what that does, I've only moved 10 blocks, 10 steps. So it's pretty small. And that's where that zoom to fit will kind of help you to get there so you can see it. And then I'm going to turn my turtle and you can turn either way. And for this challenge, it does not matter. And I'm gonna turn him 90 degrees if I can get him to do that. And then like Cynthia was saying, you can just press over here if you want, or you can press over here. You can press the top of the block. 
Um, and all it's going to do is it's going to move those 10 steps and then it's going to turn the direction of the turtle until I give it another uh, like another direction. All it's going to have done is changed which way the turtle is pointing for that second one. All right. So now that we've done this, we're going to go maybe back to the slides. And I just want you to make a square. So continue the code that we've already done and make a square. Have any questions? Yeah, and that code we created is, is here on the slides if you need that as a reference point. So we're gonna give you just a couple of minutes to do that. And since there's only two of you, you guys feel free to talk. Yeah. Um, ask us questions, whatever you wanna do. <laughs> I did it, it's, all, it's okay. You did it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Everything's fine. I, I'm working on mine. Um, I'm so excited to have something because we've been using what's already pre-programmed in our embroidery machines. My teachers just got them. So that's as far as awesome. we've been able to get learning. So I'm ready for us to do something different. So this is this is exciting. Yay. That's really able to go one step further than what they've been doing. And we do, yeah. we teach them to do Arduino coding in um in Tinkercad. And so this looks a lot like the coding in Tinkercad. Yes. So I think they will like that because they understand the coding in Tinkercad. It so. also looks a lot like Scratch if mm -hmm. they've done any Scratch. And they probably have done a little bit of Scratch. Awesome. All right. We'll just give you like one more minute. Because okay, I'm not quite finished. Yet. Yeah, no, that's no, fine. No worries. Hello, Noah. Hi. So maybe, maybe guys, you can uh, give Noah some directions so you can catch up. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, we are um, in Turtle Stitch. If I can get us to go back, um, it's just turtlestitch.org. Um, and we clicked run, and now we are creating a square. Um, so Turtle Stitch allows you to go uh, from this code directly to uh, an embroidery machine. So you can design your own embroidery designs. Um, so a lot of digital embroidery machines, like Teresa was saying, already have designs uh, on them, but this allows you to create your own without having to go out and purchase something. Um, so they are taking some time right now to turn the code that we started with into a square. Um, and I'm actually going to hand it off to Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if, if you're just joining us and, and catching up or you're working through your first square or uh, Andre, is that correct? And okay. And maybe you've already completed your square. Um, we'll give a couple of, uh, give an example of how you could go about this. And, you know, especially when you're working with, with students K through 12, um, oftentimes people will have a different way to code something, some ways more efficient than others. Um, one solution to this, um, to, to building a square here, would be to make sure that um, our, our movement and our turn block, where we turn 90 degrees, is repeated. Uh, and this is a, a really cru crucial block when you you are working to turtle stitch. So under the control section, uh, you'll scroll down, you'll find a repeat block. Um, and I'm actually just going to drag in my move and turn block straight in here and uh, attach it back underneath pin down. I don't wanna repeat that four times. I'm just gonna have that repeat four times because a square has four uh, edges and I should be able to run this and end up with a square. Um, you could have obviously just said move and turn and done the code four times, but again, we're looking for efficiency. Uh, and so that's where we'll, we'll, where we'll end up. Any, any basic questions on the square? No, that's all good. Cool. Um, so we'll give one other, um, another practice problem here um, and I'll go ahead and clear all my stuff over. Anything you don't want, you can just drag it back over to the palette um if we want to clear our design and um i will go ahead and uh make sure on, my, on mine that i've cleared my page off so again i have my turtle he we can go ahead and reset our view again uh and this time we're going to make a circle 
um, this is the last shape we're going to make, and then we're going to kind of move into some more um, personalized projects. So just like last time, and even though there is some debate on the best way to do it, we're going to start with um, when the green flag is clicked is how we're going to be begin our code. Uh, again, we're, we're going to clear the station so that we don't end up dragging unnecessary thread uh, across our embroidery plane. Um, we'll go to the pin section where we'll bring our pin up. Uh, followed by, we'll be moving back to uh, X and Y zero, back to the center of our plane. Uh, we did a project with high schoolers uh, last year, and the number of uh, students who ended up trying to embroider off of the machine, um, we, we learned quickly to include this step. Um, and then finally, we want to make sure that our pin uh, goes back down again so that uh, when we are embroidering, it will, will work. Um, so we're going to use that repeat block right away this time in making a circle. Um, and I'm going to uh, say we're going to repeat this an uh, unforeseen amount of times. This is going to be what your job is to decide. Um, but we're going to use this uh, turn. Sorry. Uh, we're going to have our turtle turn 15 degrees. And we're also going to have it move 10 steps, just like last time. And using the same code, um, we want you to try to finish a circle with your turtle. And um, we'll give just a moment for you to work your way through that. And please feel free to let us know when you've come, when you if you're finished or if you need any assistance. Hi, Cornelius. Did you are you just joining us? Uh, yes, sorry, I'm joining the late. Oh, not a problem at all. Just to let you know, we are working in a, a site called Turtle Stitch right now, turtlestitch.org, which is, which is going to let you code your own designs for an embroidery machine. So if you want to join us on Turtle Stitch, right now we're working through just a couple basic tasks as we learn the coding system. Um, we're challenging people to create a circle. Um, we're about to give kind of a explanation on how that would would take place and then we're going to move into some other tasks so thanks for joining us yeah all right so we're gonna go ahead um so if you threw this in here as it started you'll see you get like a half circle. Um, so this is where some of the fun math comes into it. You have to think about how many degrees are in a circle. Um, so if I'm turning 15 degrees each time, you know, we have to get to 360 degrees for a circle. So you have to think 360 divided by 15, and that is going to get you to 24 will give you the whole circle. Um, so the fun part is you can change that number of degrees. You can say, I want to go one degree and go 360 times. It's going to make a much bigger circle and it's going to be uh, smoother because it's less, it's fewer turns. Um, or, you know, you could, you could do fewer. Um, and that's actually the same way we got the square is by doing the 90 degree turns four times. Um, so you can also change the number of steps you do to change the size. That'll make it smaller or bigger. Um, so you really can personalize it that way as long as your the degrees you go and the repeats when you multiply them together, they get to 360 degrees. So now that you've played with a couple of repeat blocks and you have drawn a couple of shapes, we're just going to give you one final uh, challenge that everybody's going to do the same thing. Um, I think this is really important uh, to play with just because uh, until you realize this function is there, 
uh, you think that making a word is a lot harder, but I just want to challenge you to make a word. I don't care what word you do, if it's your name, if you, uh, however you get there, I just want you to explore until you can code a word. We're not going to give you how to start that. Yeah. We just want you to find it on your own. And like Emily said, we're going to give a, a little, just a few moments to make a word. We all may do that a little differently. We're hoping at the end of uh, this section, we can take a chance to just share some of our code and compare how some of us have worked on the same task. We're also going to really test the screen sharing capabilities of Zoom today. So uh, if anybody uh, is interested or able to uh, show a word that they've created, um, you have control. Um, hopefully. We've, hopefully. <laughs> uh, we'd, love, we'd love to see uh, okay. how you did what you did. So please feel, feel free to choose a screen share. So I used the, the draw text uh, <laughs> block. The helpful one. <laughs> yeah. And now I was I was starting to to figure out how how can I use that one that uh, follows the mouse pointer and try to to draw something myself. So I don't know if that's possible. You know, I try to write it very much I've but, students use that one before yeah that one feels like it's too much up to chance for me uh, but some of the students definitely like it so when we get into our more open time I'd love for you to figure that out <laughs> cool um should we do you want us to, to move forward yeah did everybody find the draw text command or were you trying to code individual lines um, after he said something, I did before I'm trying to do a little step forward. Turn right. <laughs> yeah, so down in motion, they do have draw text I, with the I size found it after he said that. <laughs> yeah, um, so that's a, a super helpful one. Not to say I, coding for coding sake is wonderful. So if that's what you were doing, that's great too. Uh, the, the draw text is kind of like a, a shortcut. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Um, all right. So to, for kind of our, our final challenge today, um, we want to make sure, and I think, Teresa, this kind of uh, segues into what you were talking about. You just got embroidery machines. How do you go beyond just embroidering what exists and is preloaded onto those? Um, so we have um, created and stolen uh, and collaborated with people. Borrowed. Here, borrowed. borrowed. <laughs> collaborate, collaborated uh, with other educators here in Hamilton County in Chattanooga 
And uh, these are four um, projects that are, you know, focused back into the classroom uh, and, and how maybe an embroidery machine could be used um, to complete a project. Um, so we're going to in, in encourage you to work on one of these four, we'll kind of go over them. Um, obviously, we have a really small group today. So um, if you feel like you'd like to brainstorm on something else or we want to kind of talk out a project together, that works as well. Um, but the four projects here that, that we have here um, include a, a math focused one where students uh, created quilt squares that covered angles like supplementary, complementary angles um, and, and triangles. Uh, we also had a science project uh, where, this is my favorite one, where <laughs> students designed a quilt square to bring awareness to the beauty and the fragility of a specific biome. This feels like a haiku waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. um, it can really be a great incorporation with ELA. Um, students can read uh, passages or poems and then um, create their own, this is their own word cloud essentially, where they uh, will uh, use a text to prove the tone you identified and uh, the history person and me, uh, I love the creation of a sash that honors the 19th Amendment and, and Dallas Dudley. So if you need some guidance on like, what do I work on? What do I code? Here are four options. Um, otherwise, we'd love to uh, brainstorm with you all. So we have about 12 minutes or so um, to work on that. And we would love to see what you guys come up with. So we already have some examples of these, but I feel strongly that you guys are going to come up with better stuff. So feel free to work on one of these. If you have something else that you would like to, to code, go ahead and do that. Um, and then hopefully we can share out at the end. Yeah, and as you guys are working, please don't hesitate to ask any questions. Uh, we can, again, keep sharing our screen and uh, show our own uh, uh, turtle stitch palette if it helps to uh, work on a tool together. This is too, too difficult. You sound just like our students. <laughs> yeah, I don't have much time. I need more time. I know time is, time is short. <laughs> As, because of that, you know, if you have just something like in, in the 12 minutes we have, you just have something, something cool you want to make, go for it. Yeah, yeah I, I have some questions for you guys, uh, yeah. two, two things. Two things that comes in mind. One, have you ever uh, worked with the the conductive thread to make wearables and circuits and stuff like that? Oh, come on, tell me, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, so I've never done it with uh, embroidery. I'm not sure that they make embroidery thread that is conductive, um, but I have uh, made some really cool interactive maps. That's one of my favorite projects. Um, our students have ever done is making interactive maps uh, where they put buttons and they code lily pad um, to make certain things light up on a map. Uh, geography is such a lost art at this point. Um, our students really had never interacted with maps. So getting to create their own and incorporate coding into it is incredible. Um, I think it would be fun to add after you've embroidered to add some some conductive stuff into it. I've not seen that done. I've not seen the two combined, no. Um, but that's a really interesting idea. But yeah, that would be a really, you could easily embroider something and um, go back through with the sewable circuits and add the small smaller pieces. Are you able to like print this pattern out so that they could sew it? So, um, Hmm. I hadn't considered the idea of printing printing the pattern out on paper and so well, if you it. were doing conductive thread, like yeah. you could it could be used as a pattern. Is yeah, what I'm thinking. I, I would assume you can. I honestly don't know a whole lot about like sewing patterns and how they how they work. Um but you should be able to, I would assume. Yeah, you, you would be able to do that, certainly. Okay, so okay. I have a question, another question. Um, it said one is too long. 
will get clamped. What does that mean? (laughs) So it actually means that if you tell it to go like a hundred steps, it's trying to do that in one embroidery Uh jump. So instead I would have it do 10 steps and repeat it 10 times. And then it'll do like 10. I don't know what those are called, but something you have to teach students like to use, like the repeat and put in 10 steps. Yes. To go a hundred, put in 10, 10, 10, you know, on the repeat. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's helpful to show students, you know, as they're doing this, like the back of an embroidered project, mm-hmm. because the front can be beautiful and precise and the back has so many loose threads and things that have been tied down. I think it's important for students to realize like just how many times that embroidery needle is, uh, is going through your fabric. And that's where, I mean, we're at the very introductory level, but I think this would be an easy jump to go from where we are with introductory to having them do this. It, it definitely is. Um, we were able to, you know, I think in the course of like one 60 minute classroom period, this was with um, sophomores in high school, but we were able to get students creating on turtle stitch and embroidering in the same class period. So um, it, it happens fast. So do you, did you teach them the machine at a separate time or you did all the design and embroider all in the same class? So it was a little bit of a, a free for all. So we ended up having about 60 kids <laughs> with just the two of us. Um, so we had a lot of videos like watch this video for turtle stitch, like intro, watch this video for, we also had, we have lots of different machines. So when you're looking at embroidery machines, I don't know if you have the same machine um, like multiple of the same machine. We ended up having six different. slightly different machines. Uh, we have um, the same machine. Thank that that's super helpful. Yeah. So we have really relied on like, put a QR code on there, watch this QR code, try it yourself. And then if you can't figure it out, then reach out. And we were running all over the place, but it was a lot of self-direction mm-hmm. because there were only two of us. Um, but Honestly, with the coding aspect of things, what I have found is um, adults need a lot more guidance. The kids surpass me almost immediately. <laughs> and they're like, well, what if I click this button? I'm like, ah, I'll try it. We'll see. Mm-hmm. So like, I play on Scratch already. Uh, yeah. I'm already familiar with this. Um, it's the, the actual physical embroidery machine is where they need a little bit more guidance because they are just willing to play. Um, which a lot of us, I think have lost that. Mm -hmm. Um, but with that, like you have to think about safety and not breaking needles and things like that. So that's where they tend to need more guidance with the coding They're They're willing to just jump in and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then the coding is where the majority of the learning is happening anyways. Um, the, and so you use this, this was like a class assignment. Yes, it was actually, um, the students were creating like personalized quilt squares that were going to, they then sewed them together to represent their whole class. Um, and like wow. what they learned about themselves. It was an, it was an English project and they also, it was self-differentiating. So they got to choose, um, they didn't have to use an embroidery machine at all. They could hand sew, they could hand embroider, they could use a design that was already on the embroidery machine, or they could, do their own using turtle stitch. So that also kind of helped because not all of the students chose to use turtle stitch and not all of the students chose to use the digital embroidery machine. Gotcha. I know we do, we have, we we work with middle schoolers in after school program. And I have found for some reason, some of them like when they learn to hand stitch, it's like a big deal. Yeah. And I don't think of it as a big deal, but they, it's a big deal to them because they've never done anything like it. Well, and like Andre was saying, if you have played with conductive thread or if you haven't played with conductive thread, that's a super cool way to kind of add in hand stitching, which a lot of them don't know how to do circuits. Even if they think they understand circuits, when you add in the thread, and then they're like, oh, you know, you can't, I don't want to have a short circuit. And then I turn over their their pillow and it's just like a bundle of thread. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Um, so it's a it adds something to it. So they'll be like, why is my light not lighting up? And I'll turn it over and I'm like, well, why do you think? 
<laughs> um, so that would be a cool way to, to take it one so, step further. So the hand stitching project, what do you do that? Is that also in a classroom setting? Uh, yeah, so when I've done conductive, uh, the way our district works is most of our digital fabrication labs are only used to support content area teaching. So everything has to be tied to a content standard. Gotcha. Um, so yes, they- Which they, is what I'm interested in doing because we're doing yeah. after school now, but I really want to get into this school setting. Yeah, so that was actually for, it was, they were doing civil war maps. Um, so it was geography and then they had to like, show they had to use color of the lights and things like that to represent like who won the the battles or each group had something different that they were working on yeah but ge geography works whether or not you're doing so sewable circuits um <laughs> geography and turtle stitch go really well together and like I said it's a lost art these kids don't know anything about geography for the most part so anytime we can hit that is good right uh, do you have geography standards? They're built into the different to the social to the uh, social studies curriculum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I Cornelius. guess Cornelius has a question. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. No worries. Uh, that, was, that was good information. I was uh, taking the kids. Anyway, um, so I work at Indigenous Corporation. I work at CHC, and so a lot of the work, work, a lot of our work is with Indigenous youth. And so growing up, I didn't really get to experience my culture. So I do share in the experience of uh, students being very excited to learn hand sewing. Uh, almost to the point where they have an aversion to using sewing machines. I'm like, you know, we could just do this in like 15 minutes instead of taking like two days to sew together, do this one skin sewing project. But you know, whatever, you're enjoying yourself. You know, and that's what's important, I suppose. Um, it's, it's like the main reason why I chose this one is because I wanted to find a way to do more of my sewing and skin sewing stuff. But the problem so often I find with curriculum development is incorporating STEM elements into it because I'm like, uh, what do you mean? There, there's math. I don't know. You find it. It's there though. You see it. The maths and everything. It's in there then. You know, <laughs> you know, the math it's in there somewhere. You got to figure out how many holes to put in. There you go. Uh, no, that's apparently it's not how it works. So I chose this one for that, as well as like, admittedly, I'm very uh, swayed away from coding things. I'm like, uh, I, words and things that I don't know how to do immediately. I am now disgruntled. Uh, but, you know, it's a growing experience. So, but yeah, working with Indigenous youth, a lot of sewing happens, or at least for me, it does because it's something I personally have always really enjoyed and like, you know, because like learning how to sew things and now like learning my own traditional crafts and finding ways to connect it to our curriculum is interesting. Specifically, we have a couple like curriculum things that are like binary beading projects and uh, a couple other things. Or like, uh, you know, we'll do like use 3D modeling to make uh, duck calls. But yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, that, that sounds really cool. Yeah, I think it could also be cool to have, like, if they come up with a design that they want to hand stitch, if you could, like, split the group into two, um, like, two groups where, like, one group is hand stitching and one group is coding to do it, um, just to see, like, the precision of, um, of the embroidery machine is super cool. However, I also think that hand stitching, like that, that is an art in and of itself. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, obviously I'm a digital fabrication person, but I also think that we, we can celebrate when kids just want to do it by hand. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, so I, yeah, I think celebrate anything they're interested in at this point, if they have a passion, I'm like, go for it pursue that passion as much as you can. Yeah, and that comes down to a lot of these projects, you know, it's it's not our job to make sure that students learn how to use turtle stitch. It's just a tool that helps us, you know, punch that geography into their heads. Um, yeah. That sounds violent, but. <laughs> Osmosis. Yeah. Osmosis. We, have, we only have uh, three minutes more, but I, I, I'd like to add two things. One about the, this project, Cornelius. It will be so cool if uh, you working with indigenous uh, export the files that of the projects that you made and 
put it online so people from around the world can learn about the culture through digital fabrication, you know? So if I, I'm in Brazil, okay, look at this pageant, look at this expression of culture. I can replicate, replicate that here. We can see what they, they mean, what they are about. Uh, through their projects. This, this is going to be cool. And another quick question. Have you uh, tried alternative materials or only fabrics? Because I saw there's some artists that do embroidery into pictures and photographs and, yeah. and papers. I'll put it on chat so you can, uh, can take a look. Oh, we have cool. two minutes. Yeah. Two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we will check that out. Um, I think um, to make sure that we uh, wrap up in time, uh, we'll we'll give our last. Yeah, we just have a little bit more. Um, time goes quickly, huh? It does. I didn't expect that. Um, so just so you guys know, and this is in that folder, that bit.ly folder, uh, bit.ly slash turtle stitch folder, I think is what it says. Um, these are our examples of those projects. And there's also um, some cards for like introducing students to turtle stitch. We did not make the turtle stitch cards. Um, we did make these examples. Um, again, that is in that folder. Um, we were gonna share if we had time, but I don't think we do have time. Uh, good questions took took us uh you don't have to look at our our bad embroidery examples they were actually made by us not students um we do have some other videos uh these are the videos that we gave those students when they were doing that project um in at the high school so those are our just like how to get started with these embroidery machines these are the ones that we have um in hamilton county and just to how to get started with turtle stitch um and then this page is just i always get a little lost the first time I get back to turtle stitch, I'm like, where do I find that button? Um, so I just made this page for myself really. Um, so like, I don't know where to find when the flag is clicked. Oh, that's under control. Um, so just some important controls. Uh, again, uh, you can do the same thing lots of different ways. These are just the ones that I have found helpful. Yeah, and again, uh, that that um, bitly was uh, bit.ly turtle stitch ideas, and um, oh, excuse me, there's bit.ly turtle stitch folder, um, but there is a project bank of ideas. This is stuff that we've created, stuff that's in our district, and stuff that um, participants in, in this training have have added uh, in the past. Um, Thanks, we've got 30 seconds left. So thank you so much for joining us with Turtle Stitch today. Again, I'm Andrew Hardy, this is Emily Hurst. We're both with Hamilton County Schools in Chattanooga. Um, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you with Turtle Stitch. We'd love to help plan a project um, for your students to embroider. Um, and we, we'd love to serve as part, thought partners and we'd love to have visitors in Hamilton County. So if you're ever heading out towards Tennessee, um, we'd love to take you to some of our labs. And, and, and get sewn with you. Oh my gosh, two seconds. Bye guys. Thank you, it was great. Thank you guys. <laughs>